Wouldn't believe it. The Giants winning in overtime. Dallas pulling it out late in the Battle of Texas. Let's take you to the scoreboard and show you some of the highlights. And, of course, one of the most dramatic games, well, that took place down in Texas. It was the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Oilers, and the Cowboys win it 17-10 and had to do it the hard way because Houston came flaming back at them. Now, Warren Moon gets hammered here by Randy White of the Cowboys. Moon jumped back on it, but for the game, Moon was sacked 12 times, tying the NFL record. Danny White got the Cowpokes on the board with his touchdown pass to Timmy Newsom in the flat, and Tommy Landry and the Cowboys were in control. But then, Moon came right back. Irv. Boy, a beautiful strike right here to Drew Hill. A 40, a 57-yard touchdown pass. Hill with great speed. is a great kick returner. Here he takes advantage of the speed, goes all the way. Mike Saxon had this punt block, and the Oilers were still coming because that set up the game-tying field goal, and then Irv Dorsett had to take over again. Anytime he gains over 100 yards, the Cowboys generally win. He went about 159 yards today. It's a 31-yard run there, and the Cowboys are in control again right here. Great play call, wasn't it? Terrific. Freddie Cornwell catches the one-yard throw from Danny White, and the Cowboys win it. And I'd like to welcome those of you who just watched another dramatic game unfold over in Philadelphia. That, of course, was the New York Giants. As you can see behind me, the Dallas Cowboys have beaten the Houston Oilers 17-10. They did it very late in that game on the touchdown pass from White to Cornwell. Now, those of you who watched other games, the Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles went at it. They went to overtime, and the Giants win it on an intercepted pass. Ron Jaworski had come in the game as the Eagle quarterback, dropped back to throw the ball. It was deflected, picked off by Reggie Patter, Elvis Patterson, 30 yards on the interception for the touchdown. And Irv, what was the situation over there in Philadelphia when that happened? Gee, it's really a hard-fought ball game. And, of course, uh, the Eagles, within 30 seconds of the ball game, had a chance to kick a winning field goal, missed, won the toss for the overtime, ran a play on the first series of plays. The worst pass you saw was batted, and uh, Patterson went in for the touchdown. Jimmy, you predicted that it was tough to beat a team twice in one series. No question about it, but it was stupidity that it had to go into overtime. Sims should have taken a safety, Brent. All right. Now, the Raiders and New England, and it was the Raider defense that got the job done here. They accounted for three touchdowns against the New England Patriots, and Rusty Hilger had to replace the injured Mark Wilson. Wilson going out with a damaged ankle. Remember now, the Raiders have lost Jim Plunkett. Hilger is out of Oklahoma State. They pressed him into service, and the defense picked up the slack for the young man. They were trailing at the time, and the Raiders come back to win it 35 to 20. Minnesota and Buffalo. The Bills came charging back in this one, tied the game at 20, and the Vikings were forced to go to the well one more time, and they did to win it 27 to 20, the final there. St. Louis picked on Green Bay early, then won breezing. Well, it's not quite over, but it's 43-21. They are going to win that one breezing. Now, Seattle, they came up empty this afternoon, and Kansas City jumped all over them, winning that game 28 to 7. Daron Cherry, the secondary for the Chiefs, intercepted four passes. That ties an NFL record in that game. Detroit ran its record to 3 and 1, 30 to 9 over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was the final in that game in the Silver Dome, and the Chicago Bears remain unbeaten. They trailed 10 to nothing, and then the Bears reel off 45 unanswered points, and I've got to ask the Greek about the Washington Redskins and Irv Cross, too. What's wrong down in Washington with that team, Jimmy? They might have got old. How about you, Irv? You got a feeling about the Redskins? Are they old and over the hill? Well, I don't think they're old and over the hill, but uh, Joe Gibbs has some interesting things this year with his offense. He's tinkering with it a little bit. For the first time uh, since he's been there as head coach, the Washington Redskins are running from an I formation. They usually run from a single back. Now sometimes they're running from an I formation, two backs in the backfield, and also an unbalanced line. So you call the, the, I don't Jimmy's care what you out. say. Theisman went over. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all, oh. unfortunately, get yeah, old? Too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've got the 4 o'clock games have just started. Well, let me show you the matchups and we'll tell you what's happening there remember the rams are the only other unbeaten team along with the bears and then the falcons are underway no score there how about that miami denver matchup no score there in the first quarter cleveland and san diego just underway and the chargers they strike and they lead the browns right now by a count of 7-0 the new york jets better than any of us expected when this season began they kick a couple of field goals and they lead the Colts 6-0. New Orleans and San Francisco, the Super Bowl champions underway in Candlestick, and they are scoreless with the Saints. More highlights, more scores, more action coming up when we continue with the NFL Today postgame show on CBS in just a moment. 
There are heroes this afternoon with the Giants, the Cowboys, and the Bears. Let's meet some of the stars. Let's go out now to Philadelphia, Pat Summerall and John Madden. Pat? Okay, Brent, one of the heroes, Leonard Marshall, is down on the sidelines. It was not quite as easy as it was the first time, was it, Leonard? It wasn't too easy. Uh, I tell you, Kevin Kevin is going to be a good football player. He's working very hard. Uh, some things that they worked against him, but they, they kept it back in a lot on me, and, uh, you know, I wasn't able to beat him around the corner like I thought. But I did make some plays, and I'm glad we won the football game, and Elvis Patterson has proven himself to be an NFL corner. Hey, Leonard, uh, uh, right there at the end of the game when McFadden was coming in to kick the field goal, I know just before that kick, you guys took a timeout. Did you think that that affected him any, or did you have any special block on that field goal that he missed? Well, we were hoping that it, that it would affect him, and, uh, you know, we know that he's uh, an experienced kicker, but, you know, pressure uh, can just about bust anybody's pipe, and we were hoping that that would happen, and, uh, and the end result it happened for us, it was great. Okay, Vern. Uh, Vernon Houston. Let's go to Vernon Houston. <laughs> All right, I'm here with Terry Bradshaw, where the Cowboys defeated the Houston Oilers today 17-10 in an equally difficult game. This was tied 10-10 until about three minutes to go. The Cowboys went 75 yards and finally got the touchdown. A 31-yard run by Dorsett set it up, and Danny White threw one yard to Fred Cornwell for the winning TD. But this, Terry, was a story of defense by Dallas. This was a, a game that uh, goes back to years of uh, Steelers and Oilers. It was just an all-out aggressive game. Lots of blitzing, lots of sacks, two tall Jones you're going to see here. Coming around the outside on Bruce, Bruce Matthews, number uh, 74. Hegman going inside, and one of the 13 sacks today that the Cowboys registered against Moon and the Houston Oilers. Actually, it's going to be officially at 12 sacks. They had a couple called back and there was some confusion, but 12 sacks ties an NFL record that the Cowboys share with another couple of clubs, and they also had those 12 sacks for 85 minus yards for the Oilers passing attack. So the Cowboys win it. They keep pace with the Cardinals and the New York Giants at 3-1. and one. They think this might have been a must win for themselves, and I think you might feel the same way. That was a must win for the Cowboys, more so than the Oilers, in which the Oilers were saying, hey, this is a game we got to have. Cowboys need it, in my opinion, worse than the Oilers did. Well, the Cowboys got it, but it was a real struggle. Now let's go to Chicago and Tim Ryan. All right, Vern, with Johnny Morris, we saw the Bears score a 45-10 to 10 win here today, just routing Washington, which fell to 1-3, and three, of course, and the Redskins actually led in the game 10 to nothing. but Jim McMahon had another superb afternoon, 13 of 19. He threw for three touchdowns, caught one from Walter Payton, had only one interception. But the turning point came with the Bears trailing 10 nothing early in the second period. Willie Galtz touchdown return of a kickoff. He takes it just over the goal line. It's a 99-yard return, and Willie, of course, with his great trackster speed uh, showed it well you didn't see it there but we've got Willie live down on the sideline and he'll tell you what he did he went 99 yards congratulations Willie that sure turned the game around well thank you I praise God for that what happened uh, I knew it we had to get a big play in the game because we were down 10 to nothing and and everything was going toward Washington I didn't know it would be a kickoff return but one side caught the ball I headed toward the middle and it opened up like the Red Sea and I'll okay we're going to see it, it now. Go ahead, Willie. Yeah, it just opened up like the Red Sea right there, and I, I just wanted to take off, and I gave a move to the, the, the kicker there, and I was trying to decide whether or not to try to outrun this guy, but I cut all the way across the field and it reminded me of my Tennessee days, and I was glad to be able to do that. I think it sparked the whole team a great deal. Willie, I think that you are now stuck on kickoff return for the rest, <laughs> the rest of the season. Well, I hope so. I just want to be able to do everything I can to help this team win. We have a good team, and I think we need every, everything we can get. I know, Willie, that uh, you wanted to please the fans here. Uh, the Bears fans are, are tough. They're supportive, but they're tough. And I know you were looking to make a big play here. You must feel good about it. Well, I feel extremely well to be able to run a kickoff back all the way at home. It gives me something special. Of course, my family was here, my wife and friends. And it was just, I just praise God for it. All right, Willie, congratulations to you. The 4-0 Bears go to Tampa next week, and we're going to Brent Musburger in New York. Thank you. All right, Tim, thank you very much. Leonard Marshall, a pretty good audition for a broadcaster. <laughs> you heard that in his ear and way down to Dallas. He went. Heard about the Chicago Bears. They had that very impressive defense. They've never had a real good offense, but now the way they're coming around, they're going to be very dangerous this year. You know, I was out there during the week, earlier this week, Brent, you know, and they very quietly go around talking about how proud they are of their offense. They have a great offense. As a matter of fact, they're number one in the league, I guess, going into the uh, play this weekend. 
But, um, you know, they feel if they're going to get to the Super Bowl, obviously they have to go through San Francisco. San Francisco's coming up in a couple of weeks. We'll see how good they are. And the Dallas Cowboys, Jimmy, what do you think about them right now? They're a pretty good ball club, definitely a contender, and will be in the playoffs. And we will continue with our post-game show on CBS in just a moment. Let me update a story for you on the West Coast. We get word that Dan Fouts, the quarterback of the Chargers, right now is having a knee x-ray. He took a shot in that game after leading the Chargers into a 7 to nothing lead over the Cleveland Browns, only in the first quarter. Now, already the Minnesota Vikings have won again this afternoon, but they had to come back a second time after the Bills tied the game at 20-all. They win at 27-20. Dan Deardorff is standing by Buffalo, so let's go to Dan. Thank you, Brent Musburger. And Gene Fugit, it was a big win today for the Minnesota Vikings. Good comeback. Now they're 3-1 with the Rams next, Dan. The Rams are next, and right after the game, we had the opportunity to talk to Tommy Kramer, the quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings. Tommy, once again, uh, a good job of spreading the football around. Three touchdown passes in the first half. All the different people. That's uh, That must make you feel good when you know you have that many people that can play that big a part in your offense. Well, that's true. You know, any time, you know, you, don't, you hate to re have to rely on one person all the time. And, uh, you know, now we have Anthony Carter, Leo Lewis, and, uh, you know, Mike Jones, Teddy Brown, all those guys can make so, things now, happen. What are your thoughts about next week? you got a big game in Los Angeles against the Rams. Well, we haven't really uh, looked at them at all, but we know they're, they're an excellent defensive football team. But we just if we go out there and uh, if I can get time to throw the football, I feel that we can have a lot of success against them. Tommy, how many people that you know thought the Vikings could be 3-1 and one by the end of the month of September? Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't think there were any any other than the people on our football team. But uh, you know, we knew if we could have if we could stay healthy and Bud being back, that uh, we had some talent on this football team. But uh, we had to keep them healthy. Physically, Tommy, you're feeling fine. I'm feeling real good. Okay, congratulations, Tommy. Nice win today. Thank you, Dan. Dan, let me ask you a question. You were around Bud Grant. What's the most significant difference he has brought to the Vikings this year? Well, I guess stability maybe, Brent. He really has come back in and installed the system that was there for so many years before. And, you know, needless to say, the players have responded to it. Uh, Bud is back. That's a slogan that's circulating around Minneapolis, and it certainly is true. They're playing like it. All right, Dan. Thank you very much. Now, let's get everybody up to date on all the scores. The early games are all final right now. The Dallas Cowboys win again, 17-10, tough battle against the Houston Oilers. They sack Warren Moon 12 times in that game. The Giants in overtime win 16-10. Elvis Patterson intercepts a Ron Jaworski pass and runs it into the end zone on the Eagles' first series after Philadelphia won the flip going into overtime. The Los Angeles Raiders, three touchdowns by their defense, 35-20 over the New England Patriots in that game. And Rusty Hilger suddenly takes over as the Raider quarterback because of an injury to Mark Wilson. Minnesota beats Buffalo 27-20. We just got that story from Dan Deardorff. And the St. Louis Cardinals win again. And the final in that one was 43-28 over the Green Bay Packers, who did put Lynn Dickey back in at quarterback in the second half of that game. The Kansas City Chiefs run their record to 3-1, 28-7 over the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks sink to 2-2, two and, two, and just a few short days ago, they were 2-0. and oh, But the Rams and the Chiefs have beat them now in back-to-back -back games. Another surprise team this year, the Detroit Lions. They break 3-1. and one. They beat the winless Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 30-9 was the final there. And Jim McMahon throws three more touchdown passes, nine for the season to lead the NFC, 45-10 over the Washington Redskins, the final in that game. Now, these games are just underway. The Rams, they are still unbeaten, and they are scoreless with the Falcons in the second quarter in Anaheim. Miami and Denver are deadlocked at seven. This is the first time the Marino and Elway have ever dueled each other. And Cleveland and San Diego, Dan Fouts with a knee injury. We don't know how serious. 7-0, the Chargers lead the Browns in the second quarter. The Jets get field goals early, and they lead the Colts 6-0 there in the first quarter of that game. The Super Bowl champion, San Francisco 49ers, they are in a scoreless duel against the New Orleans Saints. And college football, next Saturday afternoon here on CBS, you'll see either Michigan State against Iowa and Iowa City, or Arizona State taking on UCLA in Los Angeles. That will be live, of course, at 2.30 Eastern Time on CBS. Then on Sunday, these are the regional games we will cover for you. The unbeaten Chicago Bears go down to Tampa Bay to play the winless Buccaneers. The Detroit Lions, one of the surprising teams, go on the road to play Green Bay. The Philadelphia Eagles, who lost a heartbreaker to the Giants in overtime, will play Bum Phillips down in New Orleans. 
the San Francisco 49ers will play in Atlanta. The Falcons usually play them very tough down in Atlanta. And the Minnesota Vikings will go out to play the Los Angeles Rams. When we first saw the schedule, that didn't look like a big one, but it certainly does now. And, of course, the NFL today will start it all next Sunday at 12.30 Eastern Time. We will take a look at the Rams' great running back, Eric Dickerson. For Jimmy the Greek and Irv Cross, I'm Brett Musburger. We hope you've enjoyed the NFL Today on CBS. So long, everybody. The NFL Today post-game show has been sponsored by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less.